in my previous video, I talked about my excitement for the Mario and Luigi's new installment, Brothership, and things that I'm anticipating. And you can watch it here, or you can save it for later. But right now, I wanted to talk about Echoes of Wisdom. Many of us thought that this was going to be a Oracle's remake, or probably another top-down Zelda remake, because it had the same art style. But no, it's a new Zelda game. And the icing on the cake is you're finally being able to play as Zelda. I know a few friends of mine are very excited about that. They wanted to play as Zelda. I mean, I've seen reactions of my friends and other people who are very raring to go. They cannot wait for September. I cannot wait for September. I mean, finally, we are able to get a new top-down Zelda game. We haven't had a new one since Link Between Worlds, and that game was pretty solid. Hopefully, it gets a remaster or port in some kind in the future Nintendo console. I don't know. I mean, people who have missed that out on that, they really need to play that. It's really fun. It, the game was the beta of... Breath of the Wild. If you've never played it before, they basically have mechanic where the tools or the weapons you get normally in dungeons, you get them outside of the dungeon and someone sells it to you or you are able to wreck them and you can just buy that uh, gear, go to that dungeon or another one and try to solve it that way. That was really cool. They apply that and more to Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, really want to know how are they going to switch it up playing as Zelda. One thing I really want the team to do is really differentiate from playing Link to Zelda. Zelda should be about magic, uh, harder puzzles, or at least uh, something I really want to do since she's a princess. I wonder if she has to be hiding or not. People are gonna recognize her, I wonder, unless she that hoodie is magical. But I don't know. Link is known to be like the swordsman, the guy who is more adventurous, but in this one, you have to rely on magic. Summoning a summoner, you basically create replicate new objects, you can be sort of a necromancer in some kind. I wonder what other stuff she can do with her magic. That's one thing that I'm most excited for in Echoes of Winston. It's really sell it that you're playing as Zelda. It feels really different from playing Link. I think that's the only thing that I'm excited about. The other stuff I'm cautiously optimistic on and it's the when I saw the menu that really looked like Tears of the Kingdom, it got me thinking, oh, so you have this item list now. And then they further explained that you can figure stuff out and you, each player will have a different outcome based on how they figure things out or what items they use or monsters they use. And got, that got me thinking. I mean, in, in Breath of the Wild is cool, it was different, it was new. And Tears of the Kingdom, they got a little exaggerated on that. 150 shrines. And some shrines were cool, the others were not so memorable. And I feel like they're going to do this again. I fear that they're being lazy in the puzzle aspect. And that's one identity of the Zelda series that people know about. It's not just the story, the lore, it's also the puzzles and the dungeons. It c I could be wrong, really, but if they do not really craft some good puzzles in this game, I really feel like they're going the lazy route. And I've been feeling that in Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, some dungeons, even though they're not the same, they rely too much on freedom of creativity and some people just want to get through the, the dungeon. And if it's too free on the creativity, there's no real reward to figuring stuff out. 
I really love the the baseball shrine. Like, it's not called baseball, but it took me a while to figure out that I had to play baseball on that shrine in order to feed it. And the the rest of the shrines I can vividly remember were more um kind of like recovering your items. Like you enter a shrine, they take away your gear, and you have to figure out how to defeat all enemies with the, the items that scoured around that shrine. I think I've seen like three or four of them. Like that's nice if it's few and far in between, but getting them frequently, it's, mm, I don't know. I just hope that the team really crafts some good puzzles on dungeons and on the open area. Because that is what makes Zelda. That's one of the core identities. Another thing related to that is the linearity. If they have, if you are able to have a lot of items to create and go through walls and skip some stuff, I wonder how's that gonna affect the story. The way they handle Tears of the Kingdom's storytelling. It was really sloppy, and it's due to the openness and the freedom of Tears of the Kingdom. If it was a bit more linear in the storytelling, that would have been a much better experience for me and for others because I've seen videos of people not enjoying how they handled the story of Tears of the Kingdom. I feel like they could have done, um, like, defeat one dungeon you get this story beat i uh, like memories and you defeat another one you get a little bit more but in order you get me and that wasn't like that in tears i hope they learned their lesson in tears of the kingdom i know some of you made this cree that and still enjoy the game but that's one of my worries i really hope they iron the storytelling in Echoes of Wisdom, and uh, if they have to be a little linear, that's okay. Like, linear games and linear story isn't really bad. And the puzzle aspect, I really hope they fix on that. But anyway, I talked long enough. Hopefully, we could have a healthy discussion about this and get excited. Because I, even though I am have these worries, I'm still excited. I cannot wait to play it myself. And let me know what are your excitements or worries of Echoes of Wisdom. Let me know in the comment section. With that, I'm ending the video. I hope you guys have a great day, afternoon, evening, whenever you see this. And until next video, take care.